Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Margaret Lance, editor of Fruit and Vegetable Magazine, and I'd like to welcome everyone to the webinar, uh, Apogee Looking Beyond Regulating Growth. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, BASF for sponsoring this event. I just have a few housekeeping issues to go over before we get into the presentation. If you are experiencing any technical difficulties during the webinar, I use the chat box. It's located in the control box on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, you can ask any questions or, or put any concerns you have into there, and it will come to a technical person who will be able to help you out. That won't be me. Um, <laughs> as well, if you have any questions for our presenter during the course of the webinar, just write your questions uh, in the question box that's also in that control panel on the right-hand side, uh, and uh, they will be all answered at the end of the presentation. And finally, everyone who has registered for this webinar will receive a link via email so they can have access to all of the slides and all of the audio after it's completed. So now it's my privilege to introduce our webinar presenter, Dr. Julia Riki. Uh, Dr. Riki is a tree fruit researcher working at the Kentville Research and Development Center in Nova Scotia. Her postgraduate training is in plant physiology focused on using a plant uh, bioregulator, Apogee, to manipulate strawberry plant morphology aiming to advance and enhance fruit production. Currently, she is researching uh, selected crop covers to provide added nutrients for apple orchards and testing pesticides to control apple insect pests. Dr. Riki is a member of the Integrated Fruit Production Committee of the Nova Scotia Fruit Growers Association and provides input to the weekly Orchard Outlook newsletter on apple management. She is an adjunct professor at Acadia University in Wolfville, Nova Scotia, and she also gives lectures yearly to students at the Agricultural School of Dalhousie University. Uh, Dr. Riki, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, Margaret, for the introduction. OK. Apple G is the trade name for prohexadione calcium. It is a plant growth regulator. It has been registered in Canada for apple crops in 2005, for cherries in 2013, and just last year for strawberries. I think many growers are familiar with apple G. There are many uses of apple G. Basically, Apogee is a GA biosynthesis inhibitor, and it inhibits cell elongation. Apogee is mainly used as a management tool to reduce shoot growth in many crops. Crops such as apples, cherries, plums, peanuts, and some ornamentals. It can also control fire bright and it can reduce the incidence and severity of fire bright in apples. In strawberry, it is registered for runner suppression. In grapes, apple G can improve fruit quality. Apple G also can act as a stem stabilizer in a number of cereals and grasses to prevent lodging. Okay, the picture, the pictures here show the difference in apple trees treated with apple G and without apple G. The shoots treated with apple G's are thicker, shorter, and also the internodes are all compressed, as opposed to the control here, which is a lot um, longer. The over all size of the tree is more compact with the treatment of apple G, but the canopy is open to allow light to penetrate through. So in apple production, apple G reduce shoot growth. And in doing that, it will reduce the need of pruning in mature trees. It also suppress fire bright and 
it can also improve food, food quality and food sets. In strawberry production, Apple G is recently registered for runner suppression. Take a look at the picture here. The, the strawberry here is the control with no Apple G. And the next one here is treated with Apple G at 62.5 ppm. This one here is 125 ppm Apple G. And this one is 250 ppm of Apple G. It is very clear that Apple G can reduce, suppress runner um, production, not just the number and also the length of the runner. However, with a very high concentration of Apple G, you can see it also reduces the size of the plant. So it is very important to use to find the most effective Apple G concentration to achieve the results that you desire. So restricting runner growth shifts the balance from vegetative to reproductive growth. Therefore, plants treated with Apple G can produce more fruits. Apple G changed strawberry morphology by making the strawberry plants stockier with more roots. You can see here in the picture all the plants over this side treated with Apple G. And these are the controlled um, strawberry plants with no treatment. And physiologically speaking, Apple G can increase photosynthesis in strawberry plants. So we know Apple G inhibits the formation of growth active GAs. And because of that, shoot length is reduced in palm fruits. But there are other effects Apple G has which go beyond just regulating growth. This is something I want to talk about today. Actually, Apple G affects three metabolic pathways in fruit trees. It affects the biosynthesis of gibberellins. It interferes with ethylene formation and it modifies flavonoid metabolisms in trees. So the reason is that prohexadione, also Apple G, the structure of prohexadione is, uh, is very similar to 2 oxyglutaric acid. And in the biosynthesis of gibberellin, the co-substrate 2 oxyglutaric acid is needed to bind with the enzyme here, which is GA3-beta hydrox hydroxylase. And to and after that, the the conversion of GA20 to GA1 will be facilitated. So when polyhexadione uh, is a, a mimic, it's similar to the structure to oxyglutaric acid. Polyhexadione will compete with oxyglutaric acid to bind with this enzyme. But once it's bind, the, the, this enzyme cannot um, convert GA20 to GA1. And so the level of GA1 is reduced or not formed, depending on the concentration of Apple G use. So the same for ethylene uh, formation. Prohexadione, again, is a a, a structural mimic, you know, very similar to um, to ascorbic acid, and and so it's the same deal here. Prohexadione will um, compete with ascorbic acid and combine with the the active sites in ACC oxidase, and in doing so, the formation of ethylene is reduced or 
not form. So the same for um, flavonoid metabolism. And again, the cold substrate for this um, reaction is Again, okay, it's uh, oxyglutaric acid, so the structure will mimic of um, of of this uh, uh, cold substrate is prohexadione, and it will combine with the active size, and the desired product is not formed. Okay, so um, the diagram here. It's a, it's a simplified scheme of GA biosynthesis in higher plants. Now take a look at how apple G affects the pathway. It is an inhibitor in the late stage here, and it reduces the level of GA1. And GA1 is very active and causes because it inhibits the formation of GA1, there is an accumulation of its immediate precursor, GA20, and GA20 is not growth active. And GA1 regulates cell elongation, and without GA1, the strawberry plant here is very short and stocky, and this is the one that is the control without, you know, with the GA1, with the cell elongation. Okay, as mentioned before, the conversion of ACC into ethylene will require ascorbate as a co-substrate. And because the, f and, and the formation of ethylene is inhibited by prohexadione because it is it has a, a it, it's very similar in structure to ascorbate. In plants, the inhibition of ethylene formation may be employed to increase fruit sets. Okay, now we talk about the um, modification in flavonoid metabolism. In treated shoots, apple G caused a considerable change in the spectrum of flavonoid. As a result, plant will produce luteoferol and luteoleflavin. Luteoferol has biocidal activity against a number of pathogens including those called fire bright and scab. So apple G can induce resistance against disease such as fire bright and scab in fruit trees. On the other hand, luteoflavin is an inhibitor of insect growth. Thus apple G can protect trees from the attack by some insects. The slide shows the slide here shows apple G can induce resistance against a number of diseases. So the incidence of fire bright, scab, sooty broch, um, powdery mildew in apples are all reduced in trees treated with apple G. And the same peach powdery mildew in peach is reduced with apple G. Black spot in rose, the incidence of this disease is reduced with the treatment of apple G. Um, so is dung, dung mildew and gray mold in grapes. However, it has no effect. Apple G has no effect on gray mold in pepper or cereal powdery mildew in wheat. So basically when there is a um, reduced incidence of the disease, it is in a range of 40 to 80 percent reduction.
Okay, sorry, I lost track of. Okay, so Apple G has been tested extensively as a crop protectant against firebreak. Since 1995, more than 150 trials have been carried out in apples, pears, and other susceptible plant species. As compared to the, the control using streptomycin as a, a comparison, Apple G is very effective in controlling shoot bright, but not so much for um, for blossom bright. The the reason being perhaps you know um, Apple G requires some leaf tissue to uh, to to absorb and at the time when there is blossom bright there's not a whole lot of um, of leaves yet and also apple G works better at slightly warmer temperatures here is an example of the effect of apple G on scab incidence as compared to the control with no treatment, treated, tree treated with apple G has 42% less le uh, infected leaves. So you can see here is respective to the control. Um, and the infected leaves here is about, about um, 50, 58% of the control. That means it has a 42% percent less compared to the control. And for infected fruits, it is compared to the control, um, apple G has about 60 percent less. So, so I calculated the actual um, uh, in percentage infection and um, treated with apple G, the leaf, the infected leaves still is at a 26 percent and the fruit is at four over four percent so but you know um, I'm in um, in here they say you know you they just use apple G uh, perhaps just one time so perhaps that's why there is um, more infection Apple G can protect trees from the attack of some insects. In apples, insects such as green apple aphids, uh, green citrus aphids, woody apple aphids, potato leaf hopper, pear uh, apple sealer, they are all the incidence all reduced when the trees treated with uh, apple G. And in pear, um, pear cellar, the, the incidence is also reduced when trees are treated with um, apple G. So typically, the reduction ranged from 30 to 70 percent. So here is another exam is an example showing significantly fewer aphids um, population when the trees treated with apple G. So um, they count the number of aphids colony per five minutes, and trees without apple G, you can see there are quite a number of colonies. Um, in the tree and the one the tree with apple G has almost like just two two colonies um, per five minutes uh, in the tree and apple G plus pruning also reduced um, the number of um, colonies aphids colonies as compared to the control or the control just with pruning uh, alone.
okay, it will be of interest to fruit growers to know how apple G affects fruit yield, fruit number, and size. So trials from Germany, northern France, and the Lebanon uh, on 11 different apple cultivars show that the tree treated with apple G had a slight increase in fruit yield. So control at 100 percent. Um, this here, trees treated with apple G at um, 250 grams per hectare AI, and this one is treated twice at um, 125 grams per hectare. Um, so basically, the green and the, the red bar here receive the same amount of um, active ingredients, but a split um, application actually show an increase in, um, in fruit yield. So the increase in fruit yield in apple G treated trees also show the slight increase in fruit weight. So again, two treatments with 125 grams per hectare AI had larger, slightly larger fruits than treating it only one time with, um, uh, uh, with the 250 grams per hectare AI. So to summarize the, the talk, the biosynthesis pathway affected by apple G all provides benefits to fruit production. So the three pathways being affected will be the gibberellin biosynthesis, the reduction in um, ethylene formation, and flavonoid uh, metabolism, the modification of it. So we'll look at one um, pathway at a time. As a result of the inhibition of um, gibberellin biosynthesis, there is less shoot growth, and therefore, there will be a reduced need for pruning. And without excessive vegetative growth, there is better light penetration into the tree canopy, and the fruit quality will improve. Also, open canopy can um, facilitates spray coverage, and leaves will dry um, a little bit faster after a rain um, event, and also there will the, the bud will be will set a little bit earlier. So now looking at the um, reduction in uh, ethylene formation, and the first thing would be. Uh, increase in fruit set because uh, ethylene is um, uh, will cause senescence, and um, the in it works to obtain. You know, it makes sense. It works to obtain a moderate yield increase, especially when the the biennial trees are in an off year, or when there is a severe. Um, uh, frost event that uh, caused some flower loss, and having more fruits in general will avoid uh, oversized fruits. So now look at the last um, pathway that is being affected and, and its benefits. The, the modification in um, flavonoid metabolism will improve uh, stress resistant and lower the incidence of um, disease such as fire blight, scab, and powdery mildew. And also, it lowers the incidence of insect pests. There has been some indication that flowers are more frost hardy with apple G treatment, but more work is needed to be certain.
So actually, some of these benefits are linked to one another. For example, with less shoot growth, the, um, there will be an increase in fruit sets because there is a trading of vegetative growth to reproductive growth. And also, when spray coverage is improved and leaves are drying faster after a rain event or uh, having a bud set earlier, all these will lower the incidence of um, disease and um, also the incidence of um, insect pets. So I always put um, put this, the, a slide in if there are growers at the um, you know listening to the presentation. The slide that I will put in is to you know uh, the ways to improve the performance of apple G's so grower may you know, uh, may help the growers to, to know how to use the, the product a little bit better. So it is very important to condition the water if the water is hard. So add ammonium sulfate at a ratio of 1 to 1 if in your region the water is hard. Um, because apple G is not really, when you put water in it, it's not really a solution, it's a more a suspension, so you really need to agitate it sufficiently to, um, to make it work uh, nice. Um, if the, the, the pH is more alkaline, you need to um, acidify it to, to make sure that it is in a range of uh, 4, 4 to 5.5. Using adjuvant will help to spread and improve the penetration into the leaf tissue and uh, Agro 90 is recommended at a rate of 0 0.5 mils per liter. Also, it is important to ensure good coverage and make sure that the um, that the, the film of apple G stay on the leaves for longer and that means it's, it is a lot better if you apply apple G when the relative humidity is high such as early in the morning or later in the evening basically overcast sky is good um, you wouldn't want to apply apple G when it's hot and sunny and then the leaves dry up really fast, okay? And also, it's just like any uh, pesticides or crop protectants that you don't apply with if uh, rainfall is in, in the forecast um, because, you know, you when it's applied and there is a rainfall, it will be all washed off. The ring fast uh, period for apple tree is about eight hours. Um, the last uh, tip I have is um, do not tank, mix it with calcium spray or other bioregulators. Um, I have read an article um, that use a, a pry apple G um, to trees, and then the next day they put in G, they apply GA4, GA7, and that totally reverse the effect of um, apple G on the tree. Okay, I um, a lot of this the, the information I obtain is actually from um, a, a senior uh, person in BASF, and I would like to thank you, um, Dr. Rettemacher, for providing the information. Is there any questions? Uh, Dr. Riki, thank you for sharing this information with us. Um, yes, so welcome. There's, thanks. If there's any questions from the audience, uh, feel free. I have a, I have a few. Um, it says, uh, when uh, Dr. Riki mentions the rates of 250 grams per hectare and 125 mm -hmm. grams per hectare for apples, 
mm -hmm. uh, and the effect on fruit quantity quality, mm -hmm. how, how do these rates compare to the recommended labeled rates? Are they the same oh. label rates? Um, yes. Um, the, like I just mentioned, uh, the information that I have um, obtained is from Dr. Redemacher, and he is from Germany. So, you know, um, Apple G, uh, uh, prohexadione calcium is called Apple G in North America. It's called regardless, regardless in um, in Europe. So, so that is their label rate. So that's so the label rate in Germany. In Europe. In Europe. Okay. Yeah. Are, and how are they different from the label rate here in Canada? The label rate in Canada will be um, is um, uh, actually is uh, one hundred and twenty three point seven five, which is about one hundred and twenty five um, ppm. Um, again, it's four application per season. So I think they are quite comparable. Um, uh, from uh, Frank Hahn, uh, okay. when is the best time to spray Apogee? Oh, um, what crop is he talking about? Hmm. Which crop? Let's go so with Apple. For, okay, for for apples, um, they you know I, different a few you know various literature say a little bit differently. So usually it's recommended to spray when the, the new shoot is between 2.5 to 5 centimeter. Um, and in doing that is for vegetative growth control to reduce pruning. Um, I have seen uh, 2.5 to 7.5 cm as the limit, but um, you know, and I also seen five to ten cm. You know, as the correct time to 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 treat for apples, but nobody has recommend or no literature has recommend uh, treating apple using apple G to to treat the to treat apple beyond ten centimeter of the shoot length. The new the new shoot. Okay, thanks. Um, just lost track of myself here. Um, reduction of blossom blight. Uh, this is from Brian Sutton. Does this occur the year after application? Um, I no. I I think yeah, yes and no. You you know if um, we all know that if we can control the current season. Uh, control firebreak in the current season, right? It will have less uh, uh, issues in the following uh, season. Uh, but I think the the study that they have is actually uh, doing the in the current season. So, so so what they do is is actually not um, not a good product to use for um, blossom braid. It is very good for shoot braids. Uh, compared to streptomycin as a uh, control, apple G actually work better than um, streptomycin and other antibiotics. Okay, because Brian's follow-up is if year of application, what is the timing? The, the timing? Um, petal 4, around petal 4, I say. Okay. Um, from Eric uh, Spasht, Spasht, sorry, um, how toxic is Apogee? Oh, Apogee is actually not toxic at all. Um, it is um, classified as a reduced risk pesticide by uh, the, U, uh, the EPA in U.S. Um, Apogee has a very short half-life, so in plant in higher plants, it stays in the half life, like in two to three weeks, the half of it will be gone. Uh, in soil, um, less than seven days, it um, converts to uh, CO2, and also in water, uh, again, it will um, uh, convert to CO2. So in 
you know, in human, in mammals, uh, apple G would not store in the in our tissue. It will be excreted. So apple G is actually, <coughs> excuse me, quite safe. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is from oh, okay. Diana. Um, okay. I read about some skin cracking from the product. When does this happen, and how can it be avoided? Oh yeah, right, right. I think it's quite well known that. Um, a couple of cultivars are susceptible to fruit cracking, and I think they already know it's empire. You, you know, so I guess if you well know that empire may not respond positively to apple G, reduce the rate or try it on. You know, of course, you know the the growth regulator works a little different in different climates too, right? Different region. So I would suggest if you have empire or statement, uh, S-T-A-Y-M-A-N, which is a, an other cultivar, just try on a few trees to see if it works. Um, also, reduce the, the concentration and see if it will give you good results. So Mark, actually, I was going to um, to add to the the how safe apple G is. You know, apple G apparently do not bother bees or uh, soil microorganism or or fish or birds. So it is really quite um, a safe product to use. Okay, thanks. Thanks for adding that. Um, this is from Charlie. He says, how many applications of Apogee during the season and when? Oh, okay. Um, well, the Apogee label uh, says there's four applications per season for apples. And if for cherries, I believe it's two. And for strawberry would be three applications. Okay. And, and at what timing would those applications be? It would depend on you know what which crop you're using and for what you know for in the purpose. Um, for apples, we already mentioned that when the the new shoot is between 2.5 to 5 cm or no more than uh, 10 cm, uh, the first application should uh, go on. And if um, and you know because the um, Half life is two to three weeks, so a repeat application should be uh, anywhere from 14 to 21 days. Okay, that, that's great because Charlie was asking basically in regards to apples. So oh, okay, that's okay. that, that's good. Um, actually, he says uh, um, he does have a follow up with four applications. Uh, what is the estimated cost per hectare? Um, I. I, I I'm not a grower, so I don't I don't I don't really know. But I know in um, the you know the the Ontario Ministry uh, site they talk about um, the cost. I believe it's John Klein that has an article there, and in two I believe in two thousand and six it will cost about two hundred and twenty six dollars per hectare. Okay, thank or you. Or $91 per acre, but that is 2006, which is 10 years ago. So I, I suppose it will be a little bit more. <laughs> is there any BASF people here that can tell us? <laughs> yeah. Um, this is from Charles. Okay. Uh, in using Apogee on galas, you're using mm -hmm. a PGR that inhibits cell elongation. Uh, promalin is also used on galas to increase cell elongation. Mm -hmm. How will Apogee affect my promalin use? Um, actually, I do not know. You know, if the two are doing exactly, the two products are doing exactly the same thing, why would, um, why would, what is the need to, you to, you, you know, to is it for a, a rotation reason, or what would be the reason to to use two products doing similar? Promenade, okay. he said, is for again reducing elongation, right? 
Correct. Okay. And and he does ask, should I be using both products or only one? Um, I you you know, like I said, I I I I'm not entirely sure about it, but I would say if one is doing the trick, and the other one is also achieving the results that he wants. I would say go with the cheaper product. Okay. All right. And then um, from Brian, I have how close can we apply Apogee to GA products without any antagonism between the two? Yeah, that's um, you know that that uh, again. I'm not entirely sure, but knowing that. Apple G, the half life is two to three weeks, so I would not put GA product within that time frame. Okay. Meaning then, that I would not, you know, like I have seen a, a study um, that they use GA four right after uh, the application of Apple G you know, the next day, and the, the effect of Apogee was totally reversed. So again, it depends on the concentration of um, Apogee too, right? So the persistence of Apogee will depend on how concentrate uh, the solution is uh, that you apply to the tree. Okay. Um, from, from Wendy, we have a, a sort of a question. She has some concerns about Apogee on pear um, are we, uh, regarding yes. fruitfulness the next, the following year. Is there any problem? Yeah, right. You know what, uh, from what I understand, you know, like um, Apogee doesn't work very well on pears. And so, you, you know, um, because, you know, like Apogee is, is interesting. It's like any uh, product. It works on some crop and not work on others. It can be used, I, I guess, you know, like people has used it uh, on, on payers before. But um, from what I understand is it doesn't work as well on payers. And they have to use a very high concentration to control vegetative growth. and in doing that, it can really, um, uh, you know, making even the fruits smaller, and that can decrease fruit yield. Okay. And so, for, uh, our last question is from Forrest. Um, well, it was our. My, I just got another one, but uh, Forrest is uh, asking in regards to strawberry: Is yes. there a difference in recommended rates between day neutrals and the June bearers? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. You know, day neutral and June bearers are, are, are different, right? Um, June bearers only get, uh, only because it's controlled, the June bearers are, are short days. So it is controlled by day lanes. So most of the time, you know, you just harvest at uh, uh, June, early July, and when the crop's done, it's done. Day neutral, because it's not, governed by day lanes, uh, flowering is not uh, controlled by day lanes, so it will continuously fruit as long as the weather condition is correct and also having uh, nutrients, right? So, so, you know, to use it on the two different types of strawberry will be different and depending on the purpose of doing it. So, is it for runner suppression? That is the register used for Apple G right now. But my own study has shown that using Apple G can increase for you too. But again, very often it really depends on the timing and concentration. Growth regulators are wonderful uh, uh, substance that can, you know, it's like a, a super management tool. But to do it well, you need to know why you use it and the concentration and the timing. So so I I, I don't know. For for um 
for day neutrals, usually you want to, especially on plastic culture, you want to um, restrict um, runner growth. So, so I usually recommend to the growers that when the strawberry has about four leaves, you know, that is the time to use apple G because apple G needs to have the leaf tissue to absorb in the into the plant to be effective. So, so just do it. You know, the label will tell you. You know, um, apply apple G before the initiation of runners. So, so it's not telling you a whole lot, but. Um, you know, my experience with plastic culture, apple G in our region in Nova Scotia, that would be the protocol I tell the, the, the growers. But for June bearers, do they, you know, if it's a metal role, do they want some runners? You, you know, so, so I do not know. Um, I know there are growers that apply it later the season, they plant later, and then they use apple G because they want to um, change the plant a little bit and fruit the following year. Okay, because um, I do also have a, a comment from Hector. Um, he uh, says uh, using Apogee can delay the blossom production from ever-bearing strawberries um, that are planted in the same year as the application. Um, well, he's, he may not be using it uh, at the correct time because um, I have done some research using Apple G on strawberries and I did not find that. Okay. But he can, you know what, if he's really wanting to talk more, he can, you know, either give me a call so I can talk to him in person or through email because my Apple G experience is actually more on strawberries. Okay. All right. Um, uh, from Charles, on hard to size apples like uh, Gala, uh, does Apogee inhibit size? Um, again, I, I don't know. I have not done any work to uh, on that particular cultivar. Um, so so I cannot answer the, the, the question, but the information that I obtained from um, from from Dr. Rechtemacher, they tested on oh I don't know is it eight cultivars or eleven, and they didn't see a reduction in yield, nor the size. And this is talking of apples, but I don't know what cultivars they use, and probably European cultivars may be different from what we have in North America. Um, and then I have from Francois, uh, if you make three applications in apples, what will be the rate per application? Um, <clears throat> then, you know, depending on the, what kind, you know, what cultivar he, he is using and also um, what kind of rootstock combination because for um, they have different recommendations for medium to high vigor trees or low to medium vigor trees. So they have um, uh, in the on the label, it's clearly spelled out to let them know. So um, I have the label with me right here. They say, okay, medium to high vigor trees split applications. So. Um, they use a higher rate, which would be uh, the 45 grams um, per 100 liter. It works out to something like 123 uh, ppm. Um, if the tree is of low to medium vigor, the concentration will be lower, and in you know the recommended concentration is 27 grams per 100 liter. And that works out to about 75 ppm. Uh, if the tree is very low in vigor, then you know again they tell you to use uh, if a single application, and you know anywhere between 75 to 125 ppm. All right. So well, if he needs a label, 
again, I am very happy to send him, you know, the Apple G label, which has all that information. All right. Well, th well, thank you very much um, uh, for answering those questions. Um, no, I don't have any others up right now at the moment. Um, and I'd like to thank the audience uh, for submitting those. That, that was wonderful. Thank you. Um, once again, I'd like to thank uh, BASF for sponsoring this webinar today and uh, for uh, Dr. Riki to come and share her information with us. And uh, thank you to everyone who attended this afternoon. And I hope you all have a safe and prosperous 2016 season. Thank you. Thank you.